Today I'm going to show you how I edited the commercial slash Instagram content video that I did for Sneak Energy. I got a lot of positive feedback from the behind the scenes video that I did last week. So thank you very much. Today I'm not going to do a tutorial. It's more of an overview of my workflow, showing you my thought process of how I got to the final edit. With that being said, let's get stuck in. Welcome back to another video. My name is Camilla for DKD21 Media. I just want to start by saying that the plan for the edit started on the storyboard that I did. If it wasn't for the storyboard, I wouldn't have got to where I am now. The editing was pretty much problem solving of how to get from the footage that I shot to the final piece that I sent to them. So if you jump on Premiere Pro, I want to show you where my workflow process starts straight after I finish the shoot. Also, if you're wondering why my Premiere Pro setup looks like this, it's because I knew that this piece of content was going to be in a four by five ratio and so i just thought i'd use the left side of the screen to take up all of the vertical space so we basically start by gathering all of the best clips that we got from the shoot itself so once i chose the best shots i then looked at my storyboard and looked at the order that the shots were going to go in so that i knew how to do the effects the first shot that I needed was that on the grungy background, followed by the shot of the tropical drink with the tropical background. I then needed a shot of the can out of focus crossing the tropical can. And then I also needed the same shot, but with the can in focus, because I knew that I wanted to zoom into that can from being out of focus into focus. And then I needed the same shot, but going from the right to the left into the new can. I then needed the shot of the can coming into focus and then the shot of the background changing into blue and then me taking the can out of the frame and finally the remaining can with the grungy background you may remember that in the previous video i did say that i didn't choose the music first and that's because due to the nature of this video where it's going to be some visual effects i thought i'll do the effects and then i'll match them to the music afterwards and to me that worked quite well so i didn't have to keep timing the effects whilst doing the effects at the same time because i would have got a little bit complicated so if you jump into adobe after effects there are only four main effects that were used in this video because I wanted to keep it simple. First effect is the Luma Key effect. And if you don't know what Luma Key does, it basically masks out either the bright parts or the dark parts of your video. In this case, I did it for the dark parts because the background was mainly dark. So what I did is I key from the tolerance from zero all the way to 110. Now, if we hide the clip beneath it, you see it just pretty much disappears. So what I had to do is align the next clip underneath it so as you can see it looks like just the background disappears and i actually repeat the same step to change the background from the blue raspberry to become blue the next effect is the zoom in and the wiggle to do this i made another layer and i added the effect transform and i know the layer already has a transform effect but when you add it on top it actually manipulates what is on top i very simply just keyframed a zoom in and also changed the shutter angle to 360 degrees and i check the motion blur box and I also allowed it in the composition so that we get a nice blurry zoom in. I added another adjustment layer. I added the transform effect again but this time I added a wiggle effect. So to add a wiggle effect you actually have to hold alt or option on Mac I think and you have to click on position and then what you want to type in this box is you want to type wiggle. So the number on the left is the amount of times a second that the wiggle will occur and the number on the right is the amount of pixels that that the frames will move. So in this case, four times a second, I want the frame to move 10 pixels. And, and for me, that, that gave like a nice dramatic effect, but also it wasn't too crazy. If I was to make this 10 times in a second, you can see it's like super fast, like an earthquake. And this again was repeated for the blue raspberry flavor drink. So the next effect was actually the transition where the can rolls over to another frame that has another can. Now this was a bit clunky, I admit it's not perfect and I could have done it a different way, but essentially what I did is that firstly, I zoomed in at the same time that I changed from the blurry shot of the can rolling to the shot of the can in focus. That was quite simple and then and i literally frame by frame masked the clip so the one with the tropical background is on top the next clip below it frame by frame masked the can on top still matching the can below it carried on masking you can see it's not perfect it's quite clunky and then right at the end the can disappears and at the same time it goes out of focus and i did that by adding a gaussian blur it goes into the next shot where the blue raspberry can comes in focus now it's a bit complicated but essentially i needed to hide 
the fact that we're changing from one cam to the next and the best way to do that sometimes is by distracting the viewer with zooms and pulls and going out of focus sometimes. So that's pretty much what I did. So the final effect was actually the dissolving effect of the final can, restarting the entire loop. And this was done using the shatter effect. It basically makes your footage into particles. Here are my settings. You can take a screenshot, but essentially I just, I used eggs as the pattern. You can use many different types and it'll give you different results. Keyframe the force from going to the bottom left to the, to the right. Force 2, I did the same. Physics, I only really changed the viscosity and the gravity. And then on top, I just added a transition wipe to get rid of all the remaining particles that were just floating in the air. Literally just wipes across the particles to the right. And I added a very large feather so that it wasn't such an obvious crossfade. <sighs> okay. As all the effects done, to be honest, I didn't follow any real tutorial on how to do these effects. It's just from my experience of learning After Effects. If you do want to get into After Effects, it's definitely a very, very powerful application. And that's definitely a nice way to kind of add something very different and add your own style to your videos. The next part of the workflow is actually taking all of these effects into Premiere Pro and then chop them up so that they match the music. I basically play them and I just try to arrange them so that they match the music. For example, when the can hits the table I want it to happen at the same time that the snare in the song goes off and to be honest for this process I just use the waveforms of the audio as they help me keep track of when the hits happen etc if I was to teach somebody this process I would just say play the music use M to mark all the beats and then just move the clips until they match them that's the best way to get good rhythm out of your videos okay so once I had them synced up to the music I then went through the process of adding sound effects So this is a process of looking at the visuals and then looking for sounds that match the visuals. For example, here, the actual can hits the table and I have a sound that is a cup hitting the table. I also have a bass that I reversed and then played normally which added some atmosphere to when the can drops, almost like a bit of an echo. For the tropical drink, I added some sound effects of birds in a forest. And I also had some uh, whooshes to that emphasize the zooming of the camera. Also, when the can rolls across, I have a sound effect of literally a cup rolling on the table. And that was close enough. It doesn't have to be exactly accurate. It just has to kind of sell the viewer what you see is actually happening because you can hear it. For every focus and defocus, I added the, the sound of a camera focusing. That was my preference. I thought that might make it look like someone's actually zooming in and zooming out. Another example here for the icing of the blue raspberry. The icing was literally an overlay of just ice particles that I cross dissolved and I gave it a look like it was actually coming to the screen. And I just found the sound effect, just a freezing sound effect. Some sound effects I actually used the YouTube audio library for. It's actually a really good source. And yeah, once I was done, all I had to do was actually align the final clip with the beginning clip so that it will actually play as a loop because on Instagram, when a video gets to the end, it just replays it from the beginning. One cool tip is that I actually use, if you press the plus icon here, you have a bunch of extra buttons for the editor and I just dragged in the loop playback. And when you enable it, you can actually test it to see how it looks like when it plays back. So if you're doing infinite loops, this is definitely a good tool for it. <sighs> Good. Okay, so that's pretty much it for how I edited this video. So the actual edits really just came about me experimenting with the software and trying things out. But a lot of it did, did come down to the storyboard that I did earlier, which had a vision of how I thought things would look like. Once I had that vision in my head, the software, like any tool, just helped me get to the vision. That's what I want people to think about all the time is to not get over flooded with 
effects and learning transitions and stuff just kind of have a vision of how you th want things to look and then use the software and to help you tell the story that you want in the way that you want it to be told visually but yeah those are my two cents this was actually harder to explain than i thought because i'm just like typing and clicking so yeah anyways i hope this brought you some value and it was at least somewhat interesting if you liked it make sure you leave it a like if you didn't like it a dislike and if you have any questions i will try my best to answer them in the comments below and if you like videos about filmmaking and how to improve production quality definitely subscribe for more content like that and if you do so i'll see you in the next video